joined by Robert Bauer. He's Chief Global Economist at Principal Global Investors. Bob Bauer, thanks a lot for joining us. I want to just uh, get your view on uh, what Ben Bernanke was talking about, suggesting that he's got more tools there to help, uh, uh, well, the American economy uh, from falling into a recession. Does he really have more tools? Uh, Rich, thank you uh, for the opportunity to join you. Well, he says he does. Uh, he can lower the interest rate on excess reserves. He can be a little more clear about uh, what they're doing longer term. And then he can buy uh, more bonds. They've already started the Operation Twist. People, though, I think are worried that maybe the Fed doesn't have all that many tools left. Yeah, I mean, Operation Twist has started. I mean, it's pretty controversial. I think three of the, the ten voting members said no to it. And the noise That's is right. coming out of uh, the FOMC. Don't exactly uh, give you much confidence that uh, they believe it's going to work. No, I think that's true. And uh, what they've done also by lowering long-term interest rates, uh, banks that uh, borrow short and lend long, that narrows the, uh, their net interest margin. And so it takes away some of the profits for banks by lowering long-term interest rates. Uh, they've flattened the yield curve uh, quite a bit. I mean, you have an inverted yield curve here in Australia, and there's, it's uh, slightly inverted in Europe. And that's uh, often a, uh, a harbinger of recession. It's still, uh, it's still uh, upward slope in the U.S., but by taking away some of the profits banks make, it's uh, less incentive for lending. Bob, uh, how do you, you know, when you are in the States, uh, how does it feel to you? Does it feel like you're going to be in, in, entering a recession? Well, it certainly does feel like a recession. With 9% unemployment and uh, confidence almost as low as it was at the lowest of the uh, uh, during the financial crisis, it certainly feels like one. However, th that sentiment, at least at, as yet, has not leaked through into any of the economic hard data. The uh, purchasing manager uh, number for manufacturing uh, uh, was surprisingly up, uh, surprised to a lot of people. Uh, household spending uh, continues really strong. Uh, there's not been a spike in jobless claims. The construction spending was quite good. The durable goods orders uh, last week uh, were much better than people thought, showed capital spending continues strong. So while sentiment is really bad, it has not, uh, it has not gotten into real activity yet. Uh, what about uh, Europe? If we have a look at the debt crisis there, you know, all the analysts we seem to talk to are really pessimistic about it. I guess there's a good reason for that. But which way does it get sorted out? And, you know, if these uh, um, European banks are not capitalized fully, what is the impact on U.S. ones? Well, the, uh, certainly the impact would, would not be uh, good, although uh, we think the odds of a disorderly default in uh, Greece are probably uh, uh, not as high maybe as the market is looking. Greece certainly is going to default more than the 21 uh, percent they have now. I mean, Greece has defaulted a lot. If you go back in history, it was the first country to default in the 4th century B.C. Uh, ten city-states defaulted to the Temple of Delos. So they've, they've certainly got a history of that. But I think, you know, really, you need to look a little br more broadly at what's going on in Europe. And we look at this as, as another chapter in what is really a 60-year history of integration of uh, economics, political, and workforce integration in Europe. It began with a coal and steel community in 1951 with the Treaty of Paris, and each uh, treaty added more countries, made more integration, and I think there have been tremendous benefits from that, and I believe the leaders of Europe are not about to give those benefits up. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's a political project, and uh, one shouldn't underestimate the political will behind it. Uh, I agree totally. Uh, we think uh, ultimately that the euro uh, will succeed and that the, that the uh, union will stay mostly intact and that uh, ultimately it will be the ECB that will be the backstop. Whether they make the EFSF, the bailout fund, uh, one idea was to make that a bank and then have the ECB lend money to the EFSF and that then could be the kind of bad bank that uh, attracts the uh, distressed debt. That would be one way out of it. But but ultimately, we think the e ECB will be a backstop, and uh, the uh, Europe and Euro will survive, albeit at a, probably a lower level in terms of exchange rates. Well, you just uh, described the uh, ECB as being a possible backstop. Well, it wasn't a particularly good backstop, according to a lot of economists I talked to, when they raised rates earlier this year. We've got another meeting coming up Thursday. Do they take that rate hike back? 
Oh, I certainly hope so. That was a big mistake uh, to raise uh, rates twice uh, earlier this year by the ECB. You know, I think this is uh, Jean-Claude uh, Trichet's last meeting, and it would be very helpful for the new uh, uh, ECB president, uh, Draghi, if they would do something about interest rates. I really would hope they'd take back both of those rates cut. It, w it would be helpful if they, if they even go farther than that. I doubt if he will, but uh, uh, we're certainly, I, I think that would be very helpful to the process. There there's a, there's a slightly inverted yield curve in Europe there, which is uh, also not helping the financial institutions. Yeah, you mentioned Mr. Draghi there, of course, the incoming uh, new boss of the ECB coming from Italy, which got a downgrade today from another ratings agency. What sort of uh, state is the Italian economy actually in, and did it war was it warranted? Well, it probably was. Uh, Italy, going into this crisis, uh, they had the, the fortunate circumstance of not having a big deficit. They have a lot of debt. I think it's about the third or fourth uh, largest uh, sovereign debt in the, uh, in the world, very large. But the, the, the real problem is their economy is just growing very slowly. And like the other uh, gypsy economies, they need to restructure, have a more flexible workforce, uh, uh, lower the, the total amount of government spending, uh, compared to the economy. I mean, if you look at Ireland, Ireland was in about the same straits, but they have, they're practically through the uh, uh, crisis. They had 7% uh, annualized growth in the first half, and the interest rates on their bonds are now down to, I think, where they were last uh, November or December. So it can be done, but it takes some, uh, it, it takes some force and some uh, uh, determination to make that work. Bob Bow, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Bob Bow there from uh, Principal Global Investors, who's our chief economist. My pleasure. Thank you.